is so beautiful up here. You have to scramble up this crazy little rock fall. All right, so not exactly sure which way to the site. I have to admit, I've been to a lot of places around the world, but this is one of the most spectacular scenes I've ever seen. It's amazing. You. Yeah. We just arrived to Cradle Mountain Visitors Center and we are heading off to do the induction. A bit of a safety briefing they make you do before you hit the trail. So we're just walking up there now. Probably won't film inside the safety briefing. We'll pay attention to that. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe about half hour or so we should be on the trail. Looking forward to it. The weather is um, not ideal. Forecast isn't looking great, but that's all right. We're excited anyway. Safety briefing done. Everything's been signed off, checked, we've filled out the forms we had to. We ended up getting a PLB just because we thought we're out there for 10 days, so we'd rather be safe than sorry. Weather's looking pretty bad too, so yeah. they're expecting a pretty <laughs> bad storm to roll in tonight. That's Who good. knows? It's all a part of the adventure. Yeah. <laughs> We've just arrived at the beginning. This is the famous Overland Track sign. You can see it all over social media. Everyone gets their photo before they start this big windy track and then we go over the pass and we keep going. We've got bad weather coming this afternoon, so we're gonna have to get moving. I don't think we'll be able to do Cradle Mountain Summit today, but we're gonna come back later on in the month and try and get it done then. Here we go, day one of the Overland Track here in Tasmania. Next stop is Waterfall Valley Hut. Not sure if we'll make it up the summit to Cradle Mountain. We'll just have to see what the weather's doing when we get to that turn off. But <sighs> I've been waiting for this for so long. An adventure, finally. First little vantage point that we've come across up here on day one of the Overland Track is this. It is Crater Lake. It's a old glacial lake. It's formed at the base of these mountains here. You can't see the tops of the mountains because it's cloudy and cold and windy up there. Definitely not a day for swimming. Okay. Pretty much at Marion's lookout now, as you can see, there's not much to see from up here up in the clouds now super windy starting to get a few raindrops as well just met another hiker who said he'd head to the summit and just couldn't do it it's too dangerous so have to skip that one today unfortunately and uh yeah just push on through to waterfall valley hut we've just gone across that valley and now we're heading up over here we haven't been filming a lot because it's actually been really windy and raining. Being nearly swept off some of the ridges. The weather quickly turned and that's why you need to be prepared for up here. Like, it's crazy. We've got our wet weather pants on, everything's covered, our jackets. I've got to keep moving before uh, it gets worse. So we'll put the camera down now. Made it to the sign. Waterfall Valley Hut, one hour. So we keep going that way. Still raining, still windy. It's all good. <laughs> it's a part of the adventure. Yeah, way, yeah. Oh my gosh, look at this. I did not expect this at all. You made it. Oh, I thought we didn't have five. Then we can high five, so. Oh my god, you're so wet. <laughs> yeah. This is where you wash up your dishes and you can get water from here as well. Brush your teeth down there. And if you walk around the corner here, that's the toilet block. And there's also the platform campgrounds down there as well. Had a good sleep last night. Definitely highly recommend bringing earplugs for the dorms because uh, yeah, they can get a bit noisy in the morning or in the evening. Yeah, lovely night's sleep and wake up to this 
how could you complain, really? The uh, mountains are still socked in by cloud today here on day two, but right above us, it's kind of clear. So hopefully we can charge up Barn Bluff today. We'll see what it's like though. It might be a little bit sketchy out there, still covered in cloud. Woohoo! Day two and we are off to the next hut. Weather is not on our side again, but that's okay. We're almost at Lake Well now and we've just popped out into this beautiful open field. So far on day two, the walk towards Lake Well has been pretty mellow, basically just following these boardwalks the whole way. As soon as I turn off the Lake Well, Alicia's hand off there, you can see everyone just leaves their packs here and then just takes a little day pack which I've got on me right now. It's 1.4 kilometers or 30 minutes according to the sign straight to the lake. Having a protein bar. We're starting our descent now to Lake Windermere, which is just that little lake way over there really cool from up here you can tell how ancient this landscape is when you glance out across it you can just imagine tens of thousands of years ago glaciers carving down through the valleys it would have just been absolutely phenomenal to see so i think it's about 2k now to windermere hut we made it to windermere hut but we're not staying at the hut tonight. No, it's we are camping. Because it's such a lovely afternoon and the forecast says it should be, fingers crossed, uh, <laughs> a bit of a dry night and dry morning. We figured it'd be a nice night. Mm -hmm. Throw the tent up, we carried it. We're gonna set the tent up right here. Check this out. So we have the tent set up now, but because it's been really wet yesterday and early this morning, we've put all our crap everywhere to try and dry. <laughs> just yeah. spread it out because we can. Yeah. We can. Tonight we just feel like outside and it will be better. But the mozzies are bad, so definitely bring mozzie spray. One thing about putting the tents up on these tent platforms, so you can't camp on the ground anywhere on the overland track. I think if you're doing some of the other parts of the mountain, you can, but along the overland track, they're very strict. You have to camp, pitch your tent on one of these tent platforms. So that means you can't hammer your tent pegs into the ground, obviously. However, the National Park Service here have figured out a way so you can secure your tent directly to the platform. I'm gonna show you that right now. So right here, you've got this chain that runs out here and you can clip that to your tent and you can tighten it you can see, this goes in and out, and then you jam it in at whatever distance you want. And then along here, you can just see, they've got these nails. So you can put your guy ropes down to those, which is uh, very nifty. And if you can do all that, you get your tent secured pretty well. You can see we've got that here. However, here's another bonus little tip that our friends Jess and Jez gave us. If you are unable to get your guy ropes or your tent in the exact right spot that you want, bring a couple of little timber hooks. So these are just hooks you buy from a hardware store. Plastic hook, metal screw. You can screw them directly into the platform here and then you can just tie off whatever you need to. And one secure tent right there. If you want to cook over by the tent platforms, they have these metal kind of just plates that you can put your cooker on and that way it minimizes the chance of starting a fire because you're not putting anything flammable directly on the timber. If you're going to cook out here like we are, just throw your stuff on one of these little metal plates. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight. We're having a lentil curry dal. This is what the meal turned out and we're just watching the wombat over there. Good morning guys, that was a okay night's sleep. Did you have a good night's sleep? I slept okay. No yeah. We're just packing everything up now, but it's bloody chilly. So we have everything on, trying to warm up. We're gonna go make some coffee, breakfast, and then hit the trail. Today is one of the longest days, but it's not crazy terrain, but it's just long. So let's get going. Back 
packing the tent up now. It's about 15, 16 kilometers, I think, to Peely and Hard, about five to seven hours, I expect. Probably take us about six to seven hours because we like to take our time, take lots of photos, but it's a beautiful morning. Got Barn Bluff poking up over there, which is awesome. So now it's just time to throw all this stuff in the bag. We've hit this high plateau and we're just kind of traversing along with a ridge to our left and it is so beautiful up here. The clouds are lifted, the sun's out as you guys can see and if you look all around us you wouldn't believe these views. You've got this huge mountain right here, you got Oakley off there, looking back this way you have Alicia. And Bran Bluff. Yeah, uh, Barn Bluff. Oh, Barn Bluff, sorry. Yeah, Barn Bluff and, uh, and Barn even Bluff. Cradle Mountain's poking out. These views are next level. This is why people do the overland, to see views like this. It's just phenomenal. Hard to put into words. Little forest now, which is very pretty, but you've got to watch your footing because tree stumps, little rocks everywhere. And sometimes the trail's like this. Probably about halfway to Peely and Hut now, and we found this cool little plank of uh, timber, little platform that's been built here, right in the middle of the forest. So we thought we'd stop, have a cheeky little bit of lunch, a few snacks, and the best part is you can fill up your water. Just down here, some very fresh water running down this stream, and I think it flows down to the fourth river. So yeah, we just topped up our water bottles right there. Absolutely fresh, pristine, delicious. Mm -mm -mm. H2O. Just made it to the bottom of the gully. This place is called Frog Flats. It's quite nice. It's like most places on the Overland Track. Uh, and we are now gonna start the ascent up to Peely and Hut. It's a uh, four and a half K from here. Maybe two hours, I guess, it's all uphill. On the bright side, there's no more downhill. They say day one is the highest elevation, but day three is definitely the hardest when it comes to like mental, because you're watching the rocks, the ground, it's wet, it's muddy, so it's exhausting. We haven't finished yet. So far this last uphill section has been on these boardwalks, which is making it much easier. Still going up. Not quite sure how long we'll have boardwalks for. Ah, it's way too soon. It's uh, been pretty challenging, have to be honest. After a long day, just slogging uphill like that, definitely wears you out, but it's all part of the experience. Just behind me is the old Peeling and Hut. It was built in 1917, and it's not open for public use right now. For emergency use, yes, but it's only like five minutes off the main trail right before you get to the new Peeling and Hut. So it's well worth taking a little side trip out here to check it out. All right, we made it to Peely and Hut, and basically what you can do is you just come and grab anywhere you want. It's a nice flattish piece of grass, pitchy tent. And uh, yeah, we found this spot here, which I think is kind of flat, kind of soft. Uh, we were one of the last ones into camp, so all the good spots are taken, but you get that. That's okay. And uh, yeah, now it's time to just set up the tent and then maybe yeah. bowl some water for a cup of tea. Yeah. Jazz is cooking tonight. What are you my, cooking? Uh, my special creamy vegetarian pasta. <laughs> you just whipped it up, did you? Yeah, just uh, something I prepared earlier. So this cabin sleeps 36. These are the dong rings. Pretty big actually. And they all go down the side there. So there's heaps all along the edge there. Day four of the Overland Track, and today we're actually just gonna be chilling out around Peely and Hut. We're gonna do a little side trip up to Mount Oakley. This morning was really nice, got up to check out sunrise. Didn't get too much color, but the clouds rolling in were real hectic. Cheeky little Mount Oakley side trip. The sun just came out a minute ago, so hopefully it burns off these clouds and we get a nice view. Cause apparently there's rain coming this afternoon. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So the clouds might roll in.
nearly at the uh, top here. It's super scratchy coming through. Rocky, the last section to the viewpoint is very steep and slippery. It's gonna be fun going back down. And then coming up through here, just getting smashed by these branches. But it's actually fun. It's like a giant puzzle, like a labyrinth, like a maze. Just trying to see where we end up. And we're nearly up there. Oh yes, these views are gonna be unreal. God, this is incredible. We're up here now. Woo! We Eve. made it! We're so lucky to actually get a little bit of clearness. We thought it would be fully clouded out, so that's a bonus. Yay! Yeah, it's a little bit sketchy. Woo! Be careful. A little bit sketchy, so you gotta be a bit careful here. Check that out. Just next level. Top of Mount Oakley. Check. We're starting to make our way back down now, so it's a little bit sketchy. Probably not gonna do too much filming on that last little bit. And as luck would have it, the sun's starting to come out and the clouds are lifting. We got to see Cradle and Barn Bluff at the last minute, which was good. Even though we didn't get it at the viewpoint, we still got to see them before we started descending. So that was really good. Yeah, mm. absolutely fantastic up here. Highly, highly recommend, recommend this. It. Definitely do it as a side trip. If you don't feel like going all the way to the top, there is a viewpoint maybe about halfway up and it's still worth coming up here just for this because you have beautiful views of Mount Osser over here. You got Cotty over there, Pelion West. You got Pelion East over here as well. You can see right down to the hut as well as this lake over here. So if you don't want to go all the way up to the top of this mountain, top of Mount Oakley, no stress. Just make sure you come up to the viewpoint because it's totally worth it. Just go past the old Pelion hut, maybe five minutes, you come to this sweet little watering hole. And when there's a watering hole on the overland track, it means you should probably go for a cheeky little swim. So we're gonna strip off, jump in, wash four days of hiking off us, and uh, yeah, enjoy. I think it's gonna be pretty damn cold. It looks cold, it even feels cold, just like air breezing off from here. So we'll see how it is. Woo! Oh, chilly. Beautiful. But so cold. Okay, duck it's down. So, no, I don't want to. <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, what a morning. No clouds, sun's out. It's just beautiful. No wind either. It's so still right here. It's a little bit chilly, of course, but that's okay. Anyway, it's 6.30 in the morning. We're about to hit the trail. It's about two hours straight uphill from here at Pelion Hut. We'll get to Pelion Gap, and that's where we start the hike up to Mount Osler, hopefully. Looking forward to it. Should be a long and challenging day, but with weather like this, who's complaining, right? Nearly up the top of this first section, and then Mount Osler is the next challenge. And up in front is Mount Ossa, Tasmania's highest mountain, emerging from the clouds. Made up the Peeling Gap. It took us less than two hours to get up here, so we're both pretty happy with that time. It's about nine o'clock now. What we have done is we have left our big backpacks down here at this beautiful little platform that's surrounded by of course, epic mountain views. And we're just throwing a little day pack on with some water, rain jackets, uh, PLB, things like that. Just some uh, little things that we'll need for this little hike up Mount Ossa. And that's Mount Ossa behind us. It is in the clouds right now, but still early. So we're hoping that by the time we get up there, the clouds would have burnt off. And that's pretty much it. It's uh, only a couple of kilometers to the top. But it's gonna be pretty steep. We've got, I think, everything we need. Alicia's ready, I'm ready. <sighs> Let's hit the trail, eh? Yeah. <laughs> 
We're on the plateau now, it's a bit windy and the breeze is coming in so it's important to take a windshield jacket as well as beanie and gloves for the top because even though it's a beautiful day it's going to be chilly. We've just traversed around this mountain and now we're going to hit the summit there. I don't know if you can see but there's a little path that goes up there. It's going to be hard, it's going to be steep but I'll take my time. There's a bit of a scramble section you've got to go through. A whole bunch of boulders and sharp rocks. It's not too crazy, it's not something that you need ropes for. Or it's not a veer for either. there's no chains or anything up here, but you definitely have to be careful, use both hands as you're climbing up. And not quite at the summit yet, but already the views are pretty sensational. Alicia's down there somewhere, she's not too far behind. And now it's up through this gnarly looking section. Alicia just there. You had to scramble up this crazy little rock fall and get to this point and then cut across to where I am. You've got this huge overhang here and then it looks like we just keep cutting up through that last little section. That's what it looks like anyway. I'm sure once we get up there there's more climbing to do because we're not quite at 1600 meters. Yes, so much fun. I love this. I actually love this. <laughs> Okay, made it pretty much to the top now. And it's just stunning. Clouds are rolling in, they're pretty heavy, so we didn't expect that. At least you shouldn't be too far behind. We'll probably spend a good 20 minutes exploring the summit here and then climb on back down. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, there's not too much behind these big clouds here because uh, visibility is disappearing pretty quick. Go. Starting to make our way down now. We got through the gnarly rock fall and it was much easier coming down than it was going up, which is pretty cool. And now we're just going to go down this last little steep section, go across this little ridge line, past Mount Doris there, back over and drop on down. And I'm potentially going to go try and climb this little guy. Now, Peely and East, but we'll see how I'm feeling once we get to the bottom, have a little bit of lunch. Alicia's just there, and down we go. This is the path at the beginning of the Mount Ossa summit, and it's very deceiving because you think, oh my gosh, these rocks have been placed here. It's such a great path. You know, there's stairs, they've got the, you know, stairs and everything, and no, definitely not. It goes from like, this is pretty sweet to extreme scrambling up the hill. So do not underestimate Mount Ossa. Last little section, this, there's our little platform where we left our backpack over there. Now for the downhill down into Kiora Hut. I think it should be about an hour and a half, two hours. So yeah, Jared's hiked up that mountain just behind the trees there and I've decided to go to the camp. So yeah, we'll meet up later on. Now that I've done Mount Ossa, I'm gonna charge up to Mount Pelee in East, which is this one. I'm gonna try and get a pretty good time, kind of mix of jogging and fast walking. I think it's like 1.3K up, 300 meters of elevation. So not too bad. This is the trail. A lot muddier than Mount Ossa. I still just got a uh, little day pack Left the big bag down the bottom with some food for Alicia. So when she gets back from Mount Austin, she can eat. And I will hopefully get down in time to meet her on the trail before she gets to camp. Cool, made it to almost the summit. It took about 22 minutes, so I got up here really good time. I'm quite happy with that. Now, to get to the summit, I was just about to give up trying to get to the summit. And I just bumped into a girl who made it up there. She gave me a hot tip. She said, if you head to the left, so you go anti-clockwise around this big spire here, you'll find a little shaley rock gully. You can skirt on up, and then it's a bit of a choose your own adventure to get to the top. So 
that's what I've done. She was right. I'm glad I didn't give up just yet. But only, I don't know, 30 meters to the top now. Well, this is it. The top of Pelee and East. Made it all the way to the summit. And holy damn, it's amazing. Made it back down at the bottom now. Uh, hour and 17 minutes took me total. 25 minutes up, 17 minutes down, and then whatever that equals to messing around up the top and getting up to the summit. Uh, so I just got down at the bottom. Alicia's pack's not here, so she's obviously collected everything and pushed on towards camp. Uh, tonight we are staying at Kiora, and I think it's about two hours now, just downhill more or less to get there. Feeling a little bit of rain, but hopefully nothing too substantial. This is the tenting area. Jared is back. How was it? It was amazing. Is this spot okay? Oh, I think this spot is perfect. Oh. Tonight's dinner, we are having creamy vegetable pasta mixed with some instant mixed vegetables. And this is it. It might not look good, but it's very nutritious. So this is where we camped last night. We've just all packed up, ready for the next day. Today we're doing the waterfall, kind of, I guess the waterfall way. Yeah, it's about 10 kilometers from here, Kiora, to Burt Nichols Hut, which is where we're staying, or Windy Ridge is another name for it. Just go via a couple of waterfalls along the way. And I think it's a pretty mellow day. It's not too much elevation gain. We're just kind of wandering through the rainforest and then finishing up in a gum forest. So it should be sick. <laughs> Made it to the last waterfall. This is it. Jared's just gone down to take some photos of it, and the sun has come out for us. <laughs> Next stop after Hartnet Falls is to make our way towards Bert Nichols Hut up on Windy Ridge. About two hours, I think, from here to there. It was so nice chilling out by that waterfall with a little bit of lunch. Went for a quick swim, just beautiful. Now we're wandering through a huge eucalypt forest just above the falls. We just made it to the top of the hill, Dukane Gap, 1,070 meters, which means it's only about an hour to get down to camp now. And the sun is out, it is so hot here in the forest. There's no breeze when you're here amongst the trees, so we're both sweating like crazy, but looking forward to getting to camp. Not far now. We just arrived to Bert Nichols hut and we've opted to stay at this beautiful little campsite out here in the open with mountains all around us. And birds. And birds. And I saw a patamelon before, which was cool. So lots of wildlife around. For now, we're just gonna set up our tent, hang our clothes out to dry because they're all a little bit sweaty. And then yeah, maybe throw on a cup of tea or chill out for the afternoon. Tonight's dinner, courtesy of Strive Foods, is mushroom thyme creamy pasta. Looks so good. We've decided to sit down the helipad. And I'm excited the sun's out. Yeah. Yeah. Sit here, surrounded by mountains and bush. Eight o'clock, hitting the trail today. It is a short day to Pine Valley Hut, but then we're gonna to try to make it up to the Acropolis. So not sure if we can or not. I think it's gonna be a pretty gnarly hike to get up there. So first step first, get to Pine Valley and then see how it looks. But look at this weather, it's just stunning. When you know the end is close, I think mentally you start to think you're more tired than you really are. So. If we wanted to, we could potentially just 
bomb it right through, catch the ferry, have a short day. But we're not, we're going to Pine Valley. But the mind is playing tricks on our bodies saying we're shattered. Maybe we are just shattered actually. It's been seven days of hiking already. kilometers so probably about two hours up the Pine Valley now. A little bit of uphill, nothing crazy and it's meant to be a lovely walk. Whew. A little bit oh, real wobbly this one. This walk into Pine Valley is pretty magical. It's almost like you're walking through an enchanted forest with all this moss and huge trees. had a quick snack at the hut here in Pine Valley and now we're going to go and try to get to the summit of the Acropolis. The cool thing is apparently you can just get halfway and the views are almost just as good anyway. Cool, I think we're going to see how we do and just wander on up. Climbing up through that forest was so steep, so hot. I think it's only about a kilometer along the plateau, which is meant to be quite nice. So I've skirted around the base of the summit here and it looks like the path cuts down to this rock fall and then you I'm guessing scramble your way up that. I haven't got around the other side yet to see, but I'm going to leave my pole here so I've got all my hands and legs ready to go for the climb. Not too far to go now. Alright, so I'm not exactly sure which way to the summit, but I just keep kind of picking my way up. So that was a challenge, almost like a puzzle, but made it. I'm just about to the top. One last section to climb, and then we on top of the acrobat. And this is it, the top of the Acropolis. I have to admit, I've been to a lot of places around the world, but this is one of the most spectacular scenes I've ever seen. Wow. My God. Oh my God. This is just unreal. That's about it. Time to climb down and get some dinner down at camp. It's day eight today and rain is meant to be coming and not just a little bit of rain, a lot of rain. They're calling for 20 mil today. So we decided to get up and hit the trail early so that we can at least make it as far as possible without getting absolutely drenched. So it's about 10k to Narcissus Hut, but we're gonna push on to Echo Point, which is another six or seven k past that. And then make camp for the night, second last day, and just wandering through Pine Valley. Yesterday's day was actually really cool. Really enjoyed climbing the Acropolis and the hut itself. We all slept inside. There was about 10 of us in there, I think. And it was pretty, pretty chill, pretty nice. Oh, worth doing. The problem with being the first person on the trail in the morning is that you get absolutely covered in spider webs. I'm just walking through so many of them. It's waving in front of me, trying to break them up before I walk into them, but it's no use. I'm just absolutely covered right now. So there's wombat poo everywhere, but we can't seem to find any wombat. Well there we go, two wombats just came around the corner. 
There's one wombat chilling out on the path. So I stopped, took some photos, filmed a bit. And then the second one just came running out of nowhere. They're so cute. Now we're back at the junction for the overland track. That way back to Windy Ridge and Burton Nichols Hut. And this way to Nassus Hut, which is the direction we're going. Maybe another hour and a half, two hours. Popped out onto a little bit of button grass now with the boardwalk cutting through it. I'm just surrounded by these beautiful peaks. And the rain hasn't come yet, and I think we're only about 30 minutes from Nassus Hut. And we've made it to Narcissus. Made it to the lake. Yay! If you were to book a ferry, this is where you call inside the hut. Is this going to be on YouTube? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because we've decided not to take the ferry from here, we're going to walk at least to Echo Point and see what the weather's doing. It looks very grey up above those mountains though, so we'll just uh, go as far as we can. Two hours to Echo Point. We made it to Echo Point. This is the famous Echo Point hut. Uh, they recommend you don't sleep in there because it's full of rats. In fact, they've actually got these bins here to store your backpacks in because they have so many rats. Now, unfortunately, as you can tell, it's raining pretty heavily uh, and checking the weather forecast, there's severe flood warnings for the area and pretty bad weather just all around. It's not gonna ease off. We've actually called up and organized a very special ferry to come and pick us up here at Echo Point, which means this is pretty much the end of the overland trek for us. We just got to get to Cynthia Bay, set up camp, and a hot shower. Because we stink! Just a little bit wet. The last thing you got to do is check out so they know that you completed the overland and you're back safe. That was amazing. Oh my God. This is how much waste we generated in eight days. Breakfast, lunch and dinner. It's huge size of my head. And we made it, we completed the overland track. We ended up doing about eight days because of the weather yeah. rolling in, but we still made it up to Pine Valley, got to the top of the Acropolis and did most of the side trips that we wanted to do. We did about 113 kilometers and we are stoked. We were wet on day one and wet on the last day, but overall it was magnificent. I gotta say that's probably one of the best hikes we've done in yeah. many, many years. If you're looking for an epic adventure to do here in Australia, add the overland track yeah. to your list. If you like the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and a comment below and hit that subscribe button. We'll keep bringing out more epic adventure videos like this. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you on the next adventure. Bye guys. So we've left the overland track now and because everything was soaking wet from the last night, we are hanging and setting everything up outside with this little bit of sun that we got to try to get some stuff dry before we pack it away until the next trek. Ah, the joys of camping in the rain.